Welcome everyone. I'm excited to be with y'all today. I know that we are beginning a little bit late, but I'm going to try to try to finish up as soon as possible. If you're joining, as you know, we are just having little 30 minute sessions three times. So um, again, I apologize for the delay, but let's get going. So just so you're aware who's on the other side of the screen. My name is Amber Paul. I've lived all over the country. I most recently have moved to Texas, um, but I claim Georgia as home. I went to BYU for both my undergrad and my master's, and I predominantly taught ninth grade. Uh, I taught geography, I taught AP human geography, and then something called youth in custody before I went back to school and became an administrator. Um, as you can see, I started moving around a lot, and it just wasn't practical to get a new teaching license in every state the next year, so I uh, decided to take a couple years off, and I looked up Mastery Connect. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I wish that I was with you in person so I could ask you questions. But after speaking with Susan, it sounds like we've got all grade levels represented and there are a lot of you. Um, so I definitely wish I were there with you today. Um, just so you can see what we are covering, we are going to discuss Mastery Connect. So I'm going to introduce you to Mastery Connect. And you'll hear me say this a couple of times. But really the purpose behind Mastery Connect is to make sure that we can assess student knowledge in different ways. You know, all of us teach differently. We wanna make sure that whatever our teaching strategies are works with um, you know, different types of assessment. So that is one. With that said, after we do that, we want to make sure that we can use data to identify um, exactly what our students are learning. And lastly, we want to be able to take them and target them for whatever interventions they might need. Um, so with that said, um, here is a traditional teaching model. This is probably something that you've seen before. Um, you can see um, if I take this and if I stretch it out, we've got the plan, we've got the teach, we've got the practice, we've got assess, we have grade, and we have record. Um, now this is probably what I would say that most Americans think we do as teachers. Um, and this takes a lot of time. You know, when this was created, you know, this was still under the same 180 days of school time frame. Um, to move move forward a little bit, in the 90s, this plan was created called the Traditional Mastery Learning Model. And basically, that is based off of the idea that we have students and they absolutely can learn, but they don't all learn at the same pace and they don't all learn at the same, uh, you know, just at the same time frame. Some of them need a little bit more, a little bit more help. So if you compare the two, we still have planning and teaching. We are still practicing with our students. We're still delivering assessments. Of course, we're grading and we're jotting down in our grade book or recording it on, on our program. We're still doing those things, but these things have been added. So you guys know that you are always reteaching, you're reassessing, you're recording, you know, documentation um, is huge. Um, however, the confines of the school year have not increased which we're probably all grateful for. But you know, we're still meeting 180 days. Um, the, the time frame of the school day is still the same, but there's just so much more expected of us and so much more, honestly, that we know is really good for kids. Um, so with that said, the founders of Mastery Connect noticed that there was a problem and they said, hey, um, we know that these things are great for students. We know that students need to be retaught. They need to be reassessed. And of course we need to document everything but this takes a lot of time. Um, and if there's two things y'all are, I don't know if you're like me, I feel like there's two things as a teacher I was short on, money and time. Um, so I really appreciate what Mastery Connect did for me as a teacher. Um, the purpose behind Mastery Connect, as I was saying, is to make sure that we're still planning our lessons, we're still teaching. Of course, we wanna practice with our students, but we wanna make sure that we are doing these things, you know, kind of efficiently. We wanna save time. Um, so that these other things can be done simultaneously. So Mastery Connect really helps us assess student knowledge. It helps us um, so that we can grade, we, we can record, and we can repeat those steps multiple times if needed, while also saving a lot of time, to be really honest with you. Um, so I want you to step back for just a second, and I want you to think, are you a data collector or are you a data user? I'll give you a second. Now, if I'm being totally honest, and if we we're in person, I would definitely ask you your feedback on these questions, but I was an exceptional data collector. You know, AP tests at the end of the year, um, benchmarks, um, you know, just everything in between. Unit tests, quizzes, I was really good at collecting data. But to be honest with you, lots of the time, 
uh, before I got to actually picking apart the data and, and using it for remediation, it was, it was obsolete. You know, my students were in the next grade. We had moved on to the next quarter and I had moved on. Um, and yeah, I just really was not the best data user. So the purpose again with Mastery Connect is you're already doing the work. You're giving the assessments, you're collecting the data. We wanna make it so that you are able to utilize that data in a way that will make your life easier. And of course, that will allow you to see exactly what your students are getting and what they aren't by understanding it. So with that said, I want you to glance up here for just a moment. Now, if you have not used Mastery Connect before, um, this is what we call a tracker. So this is a tracker. Um, it's kind of synonymous with your class roster. And there's a couple of things I really love about this. So on the left-hand side, of course, you can see your students. It's synced with um, most SIS systems. Up top, we can see our standards. So here I'm pretending that I teach sixth grade math. Um, but what I really like about this is that I can just glance at this and at first glance I can say, okay, it appears that as a teacher, I need to work a little bit on seeing exactly, um, or sorry, on reteaching a couple of these standards. You can see just by first glance that this is organized into three different mastery levels. So you can see mastery, you can see that's the green color, you can see near mastery is our yellow color, and then lastly, you can see remediation. Um, so you can, just by glancing up here, you can see exactly where students are. And I know if I were planning my week that I might want to invest some time in this standard right here, maybe six NSC five or, or this next one. But I would wanna step back and I would want to do a full group reteach of those two standards. Versus some of my other standards, I could quickly just glance up here and I could say, okay, I have five minutes at the end of the period. I'm just gonna pull aside five students Maybe if I pick on this standard over here, 6RPA3, I could pull aside my five or so kids that are in that yellow near mastery area because these students just need to be reminded, hey, when you multiply a negative and a negative, it becomes positive and, and they can go forward from there and bump up to that next category. So I love just by glancing at this, I can see exactly what my students are understanding and what they aren't understanding so that I can provide any additional remediation you know, whether on the low end, whether on the high end, and um, that's something that I really like about this. Uh, now, another way you can look at this is if you were to glance over on the left-hand side, you might be able to see a student that is kind of just struggling across the board. Um, so we've got the student, Daryl, over here, and it looks like no matter what way you slice it, he's just not doing really great. Now, if I were a teacher of this classroom, I would say, oh yeah, of course, that's because, um, you know, he's in the process of qualifying for an IEP, but he doesn't quite qualify for those accommodations yet. Or you might know, oh yeah, well that's because he only shows up on Fridays. Um, and that's when I deliver all of my quizzes. So as a teacher, you would definitely know the ins and outs. You would know if there's something going on at home, you would know, you know, just whatever the case might be. Um, also, I love about this as a teacher, I could look right here and I could see, okay, this standard over here on the right, Students are doing awesome. They're doing a fantastic job. So as a teacher, I might know, all right, well, it's time to move on to, to the next standard. Um, or I also might know, oh yeah, this is because there's some cross-curricular thing going on with the science department and I know that they've already covered it there. Um, so, so that's something that's really nice to look at at first glance as well. Now, one little thing I wanted to point out, um, you'll notice right here, there are these numbers up top in these little grade boxes. That shows you how many assessments have been uploaded to each standard. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean they've been delivered, but it shows that that teacher has uploaded at least once one assessment to each standard. So here on the other end, you might look up here and you might see, okay, well, that's awesome. And obviously I am a great teacher. <laughs> that's what you should think about yourself. Um, but you also might be able to say, well, I've only delivered one assessment. Maybe it wasn't quite rigorous enough. Um, you know, whatever the case might be. So there's a little bit about that. Now, moving forward, if you continue to glance up here, this is another screenshot of a tracker. And really the only thing that has changed is time. So you can see here on the left, it's the same students. It's our same standards. 
But there are a couple of things I would like for you to notice. So first of all, um, you'll notice up top that the number, for the most part, of assessments has increased, except for this one straggler over here. But the teacher has at least uploaded more assessments, and we're assuming that the majority of the students have taken some of those assessments. So that's awesome. We can see that there has been huge improvements across students. We can see that with different standards, that our students really seem to be catching on. And I think that says a ton about the teacher. Of course, the students are working hard, um, but that's something that I really appreciate. Hey, Amber, uh, real quick, I'm watching the chat and I've got a couple questions if you yeah, don't mind. Yeah, please, please. Uh, so th these may be uh, more geared towards some internal departments, but I'll see if you got any info on, on this. I wanted to know uh, how do how do the teachers access Mastery Connect? Uh, do they create a personal login or is there one already out there for them? Or? Good question. And Susan warned me that some of you guys were super excited already and, and wanting to jump in. So I'm actually not sure if accounts have been created for you at the district level yet. That's definitely a question that Susan Price um, might be able to answer better than myself. But right. um, yes, you would just access it through masteryconnect.com. And honestly, you could try. So you could put in your, your um, work email address and then you could click forgot password. And if an account had already been created for you, it would guide you to reset the password. If it hasn't, then you definitely want to contact um, your administrators and kind of just see what the time frame is, to be honest. Good deal. So this is brand new, very exciting. I wanted someone else to ask if you knew if this was associated with Infinite Campus, our uh, student information system. Your FIS system. Yes, this does have the ability to sync with Infinite Canvas. And I will say it depends. I'm looking at my notes to see if you guys are using Clever quite yet. We are on Clever, yes. You're on Clever. Okay, awesome. So I will say that this um, works with Infinite Canvas as soon as the Clever Sync is set up, meaning if you have a student that's in your fourth period and they change into your fifth period, then they will just magically, you know, in the evening, change into your fifth period. And the awesome thing is that all of that data will follow them. Awesome. Also, um, with Clever, I um, think it's really great that you could potentially have a student, not that this would happen this year, but say they are... Uh, you know, doing online through your school or maybe in person. I'm not sure how you're meeting. And then maybe second semester, they are totally 100% homeschooled. Or I should say second quarter. But then maybe third quarter, they bounce back into your class. So all of that data that was given to them first quarter would drop off during second quarter when they are homeschooled completely. And then when they come back to the school, all of that data from first quarter would just magically appear back in your tracker as well. Awesome, awesome. Another uh, question they had was whether or not we knew if this interfaced with uh, NWVA MAP at all with some of those results. That's a great question. Um, and to be honest, I don't, I don't know enough about that. I do know that if you're using specific standards, um, whether from your state or from you know a, a specific area, that those can be integrated. So instead of having just the typical standards here, we could pull those in. But unfortunately, I'm not familiar enough. That might need to be an internal. Absolutely, and I will say as well, uh, Michelle uh, Hosted with that question. We've got uh, uh, MAP and NWEA on next, so we can ask them. Oh, awesome. As well, so that works out great. All right, uh, sorry, Amber, go ahead. No, you're great, you're great, thank you. Um, so, as I was saying, you can just glance up here as a teacher, and I love that if you have those five minutes at the end of the period, instead of just sitting back and waiting for the bell to, to ring, you can truly be pulling aside students, and in real time, you can pull them aside, you can, you know, I'm not saying you need to deliver a full on assessment a second time with some of these students. You might just have them write down the answer on a sticky note, plug that information in, and suddenly you are able to watch as your students progress through mastery. Um, so that's what I love. You'll also notice that the student still is not doing well, no matter for what we've tried, and same with this standard. So again, this is a situation where if we were the teacher of this class, we would, we would know a little bit more, but we're not. Um, so I, I just appreciate that you can glance up here easily and, and see exactly what's going on in your class. So our goal in doing this is really for three main purposes. It helps us see exactly what our students are understanding. With that said, it allows us to target our students for whatever intervention they might need. And I think importantly as well, it helps us as teachers back up a second and say, okay, are my students picking up the way that I am teaching? 
it looks like for the most part, however I'm teaching, the students are really getting. But however I've delivered this standard, um, I might need to I might need to try a different route. So I, I really appreciate that it allows us to do all of those things. Um, with that said, typically, so so what I should what I should warn you is that this was really just a thirty minute like intro section, um, or I should say just intro to Mastery Connect. And I know since we started late, we don't have much time, but let me show you a little video clip. It's just um, it's about a minute long. And then I'll just take a couple of questions and then we'll move on to the next group if that works. Absolutely. Mastery Connect is an assessment and curriculum platform for formative and benchmark assessment, curriculum planning, and teacher collaboration. Search, create, and launch formative assessments to get immediate feedback about what your students know and don't know so you can target interventions and adjust instruction in the moment. Easily create benchmarks using item banks, including TEIs, and distribute them to teachers to deliver and score right in the classroom. Set proficiency targets, measure student growth, even incorporate benchmarks into the formative process. Fuel your PLC with collaborative tools like common assessments and comparison reports to gain insight into best practices, learning trends, and instructional approaches. Map your curriculum by adding lesson plans, activities, videos, and other resources aligned to any set of standards. And save time by building on maps year after year. Start visualizing learning and focus on what matters most, improving student outcomes. Right, awesome. So I had intended to show you guys. Let me get out of this full screen. Um, I I had intended to show you guys a couple of reports, um, but I know that due to time, oops, we aren't quite there yet. Um, so what I do want to say is that there will definitely be more more professional development opportunities to come. So stay posted. Um, I hope you saw some glimpses in that little video clip of some. Um, of the reports. I would say that was one of the biggest game changers for me as a teacher when I used Mastery Connect. And it's something that when I moved to another school that did not have it, it it really affected um, how I taught. And honestly, it just, I was not as effective and I would think as efficient as a teacher. It, um, I definitely missed out on that. So stay posted. There's definitely more to come. Kyle, I don't know if there's one or two more questions that I need to answer. Uh, let's see. We had uh, we had some of those uh, answered. We had uh, Susan join the chat with us, and she was helping uh, knock some of them down for us as well. So I think we are in good shape in the All chat right. right now. All right, perfect. Well, that was the end of our first session. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, always, like I said, wish I could be with you in person. Uh -huh.